Right fellas, the fourth step in the Dead of the Night Easter Egg is to come to the cemetery and shoot five trees. When you shoot a tree, a branch will fall and all you do is pick it up. Very simple is this fellas, so you want to follow my route here and do exactly what I do. So, this tree here, as soon as you enter the cemetery, you want to look up and all you do is aim where I'm pointing my gun. And you shoot the branch, it's going to fall on the floor and all you do is pick it up. So now, follow me route, you want to go up the stairs here and you come to this next tree. Again, you look to the tree and shoot the branch where I shoot in my game and you pick up the branch. And now you're going to follow my route and go to the other side of this circular area. And all you do is come to this tree here. Again, look where I'm pointing my gun, shoot the branch off the tree and pick it up. And now you want to head downstairs and in this area where the graves are, you can see this tree here. And all you do is shoot the tree where I'm shooting my gun and the branch is on the floor to pick up. So now we have one more tree to go to and if you see no branch is falling from the tree in your game you've probably shot it down so just look on the floor and pick it up. But this is the last tree and this one is outside the mansion and all you do is shoot or I shoot the tree and you can pick up the last branch. So now for the next step you're going to need the Alistair Annihilator Wonder Weapon. My guide is in the description but hopefully you've already got that in your game. Right fellas this next step is very simple. And I'm going to tell you how to do it in both solo and co-op. So in co-op if one of your players are the butler character. That person needs to find the butler's gravestone and press square on it. If no one in your game is the butler in co-op or solo obviously. Each character just has to find their own gravestone and press square on it. And if you are in solo just go find your character's gravestone and press square. But here are the locations of the gravestones in your game. Just check every gravestone in this area in the cemetery because in your game the locations are going to be different. But for me in my game I'll show you where my gravestones spawn for each of my characters. So in my game the main guy with the cowboy hat who looks like Arthur Morgan. His gravestone is here in my game near the gate entrance to the cemetery. Now take a left and you'll come straight to the next gravestone which is the Charles Dance. The legend from Game of Thrones and that's the guy with the tash. That's his gravestone. Now take a left and follow the route I take. And the butler's gravestone is here. This is the gravestone. If your character is a butler in co-op game, you need to find this one. And then finally for me in my game, I was the woman character. So I had to go find her gravestone. And her gravestone is right here. So just to remind you, in your game, if you're the butler, that person, go find your butler character on the gravestone. If no one's the butler, just go find your gravestone and press square on it. So when you press square on the correct gravestone in solo, you will need to come to the pile of sticks you collected. And what you do is stand near it and it's going to turn into a wicker man statue. And in solo, with your Alistair Annihilator Wonder Weapon, you need to keep shooting charge shots until the fire effect appears. And when that appears, you don't want to shoot a charge shot again. All you do is press square on the wicker man and you're going to climb onto the statue. And in the co-op game, the person who is the butler has to get on the statue first and then another player shoots the floor with the charged wonder weapon and will spawn that fire effect and that is how you do it. Also in co-op if none of you are the butler just have the person who pressed square on the gravestone to get on the stick statue and then the other player will shoot the floor with the charged shot of the wonder weapon spawn that fire effect and that is what you need to do. If you do it correctly the person in the statue will start falling into hell. If you somehow failed this you can press square on the gravestone again and retry this step. So when the person goes into hell and comes out of hell that person will be invisible and is going to be a ghost. And that person has a certain amount of time to go around the map and find a ghost. And this ghost is going to be in a certain room or a window or near a perk machine around the map. And the best way to find the ghost is to have your audio turned up and you want to be listening out for the girl ghost. And if you hear a girl talking, you are near the ghost location, so when you hear that voice, go look in windows in that area. But this is what happened in my game, fellas. Here is the footage. So you're the ghost that haunts this place. You're not part of that undead horde, are you? I'm here for my own reasons, dearie. Unfinished business, you might say. Now come with me. 
So there you go. Also, there's some more spawn locations that I do know because I've done this easter egg a few times. The entrance hall is a very popular spot where the ghosts can spawn. Just head towards the windows or towards the perk machine. Also, in my game you've got the master bedroom window here. Also down in the wine cellar, check every window there. I had a spawn in there. And also in the music room the ghosts can spawn. But if you can't find the ghosts in any of those locations, just go around every room in the map, look in every window, listen out for the girl ghost, look near perk machines and you'll find her. And if you run out of time, you just go back through hell and turn into a ghost again. So yeah, when you find the ghost, you need to stay close to it and follow it. The ghost will make its way to the cemetery, and when it reaches the cemetery, the ghost will stop near this wall, and then it will turn into flames, and on the floor, a stone slab will spawn. And in ghost mode, you want to press square on the stone slab to come out of ghost mode. Then you've bossed it, fellas. And now, you don't want to press the stone slab again until you are ready. But if you do that, it will spawn a lockdown mission in the cemetery. So before you do this, make sure you've got good perks and you are set. You've got a new shield, a max ammo for all your weapons, especially that epic wonder weapon. Alice's Annihilator wonder weapon. You want to max you on that. So when you're ready, everyone in your game holds square on the stone slab for about 5 seconds and that's going to start the lockdown mission. And so, all you do is kill off the vampires and the zombies for the first 30 seconds or so. And also that red vampire is going to spawn and he's a fucking bitch, I hate this lad. So whenever you see this red vampire throughout the lockdown or throughout your game, you want to turn your back to it, turn around every now and then, shoot it, turn back so it's not going to get you because... If you look at it for too long, it's going to jump on your face and fuck you up and you're going to die pretty much, so watch out for that. And running around the cemetery is your best bet here. Try save your wonder weapon ammo until the wolves spawn. And when the wolves do spawn, just take them out as fast as you can because when you kill these, the lockdown mission will be complete. So use your Alice as an hour later, spam it at the wolf. And when you kill the last wolf, your screen will go white and you've completed the lockdown mission. So now, go back to the stone slab, press square... And you're going to get a max ammo and you've bossed that step. 